Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day or evening no matter where you are in the world tonight. Want to remind everybody you can become a member to the channel now for just 99 cents a month, so if that's something you might be interested in, swing on over and take a look at that. And we are closing in on 20,000 subscribers. I am so ready to hit that number because I got a big announcement when we hit that number to make to my community. Today we're going to be taking a look at KDE Neon. Now one of the reasons I wanted to touch base on this is when it came out, Previously, it got the update in October, I do believe. There were people that were just going crazy all over Reddit and all over other places talking about how it had let them down. And I think what they were complaining about in some cases, they did have good complaints about, but what they were complaining about in other cases was a different approach that some things are being taken now that give you a little bit better way to customize the system for the way you want it. So if you want to check out KDE Neon, you go over neon.kde.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And it brings you to this web page. And if you scroll down, it just kind of gives you the basic info, the latest and greatest of the KDE community. Now, what this is, is this is the actual distribution that KDE puts out itself. It's there to highlight the KDE desktop environment. And it is also based on stable Ubuntu. You come down here, you've got news, places you can get from the website, you know, on Facebook, Twitter, and then other forms you can get support on. Solid Core, latest features, make computing your own with Plasma Desktop, and then it talks about shells. And then, of course, you can come down here if you want to donate to KDE, you can. You can visit the KDE Metastore, which has books, mugs, apparel, and things like that. And then a whole bunch of different destinations you can go to down here. And then if you come up here, you've got FAQ, Developer Edition, KDE Slimbook, Download KDE Neon, and then of course Download right here. You can click on that. You can get the User Edition, which is the one if you're going to daily drive it or use it on a daily basis would be the one I recommend. And then of course you have the Testing Edition. Now this is going to feature pre-release KDE software, so be careful. This is one you probably don't want to daily drive, but it's there if you want to give it a shot. And then of course the Unstable Edition and then Developer Edition. So I've already downloaded it, so what we're going to do right now is zip on over to the desktop. Now, as always, one of the first things that I do when I download a distribution, especially if it's KDE, I zip down here, right-click, enter edit mode, and go to more options, and I make it a floating panel. So I've already done that, so it doesn't come out of the box like this. I've already made it a floating panel. And if you download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. It's a great, beautiful KDE desktop. You've got your single panel down here on the bottom. Date and time. You've got your hidden icons here. You've got your internet here. Most recent device. And then, of course, your sound. And then over here, you've got Firefox, Dolphin, Discover Software Center, and then Settings. Now, one of the big complaints everybody was having saying when they opened Firefox, the screen flickered, no matter whether they were in a virtual environment, live environment, or installed. So let's go ahead and click on Firefox. You get no flicker. If you move it around, you don't get any flicker. And I'm going to close that because it seems as though they have fixed that. Now on Dolphin, there were a lot of complaints here as well. Let's go ahead and open up Dolphin. Now what Dolphin and KDE Neon give you is if you come over here to your usual suspects, you will see something that is a bit off. Home Desktop Trash. It doesn't have pictures, videos. It doesn't have all the other folders that come out of the box with previous KDE installs. Now, people got online and they complained. They said, it's trash. Dolphin doesn't even have all my folders there. What is the problem? Well, guys, it's by creation. All you have to do is come up to home. There's your home. And right here, I had already made that one. Now, let's watch this. Let's go ahead and right click. Let's move to trash. And this is exactly how you're going to get it out of the box. You're going to have home, desktop, and trash. Now, if you go to home, you can come over here. Some people don't do videos. Some people don't need a separate folder for videos. So why have it included out of the box? But if you are one of those people, let me show you how easy it is to customize Dolphin for you. Go to home. Go right over here. Right click. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call it videos. Videos. Click OK. There it is right there. Right click on it. Add to places. You have your video folders, guys. Now, if you want to move that video up a little bit, you can grab it, drag it up, put it below home if you want to. So there you go. There's your video folder. 
You don't have to completely lose your mind in Reddit. You don't have to completely use your mind when you're giving a review of the operating system saying how much trash Dolphin is. So go to home, right click. Let's say we want a pictures folder. Let's go ahead and go pictures. There's a pictures folder. Go ahead and click OK. It pops up right there. Let's go ahead and right click that. Add that to places. Guess what, guys? You got a pictures folder. Now, if you don't need those, you don't need to put them in there. But I'm so tired of people that when they download something and they look at it for the first five minutes, go, it's trash because it doesn't have what I need. They just make it to where it's not preloaded with junk over here and you can pretty much make it the way you want it for yourself. Like me, I don't like this remote right here. I don't need it here, so I'll hide that. And recent files, I don't need that. It's just like uh, the recents on Windows 11, or what do they call it? Quick access. I don't need that. I know where my folders are. I know how to access them. Now, I do want to make these a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go down here to the icon size and go ahead and make those large. Now, let's say you got some different stuff that you need a folder for. Let's say uh, random stuff. You got your random stuff folder, put it there. Let's go ahead and put that over there to places. Look at that. You got a random stuff folder. So please, people, if you're not one of these people, I'm not talking to you. So don't get in my comments and say, don't talk to me like I'm that way. There are people that when they opened Dolphin on the KDE Neon said, look, it doesn't have all the folders when they don't know that they can go over and customize it themselves. So if you're one of those people, just take a couple more minutes. When you first get into a Linux distro, take a couple more minutes, kind of feel it out, move around in it, and see how you can customize it and make it your own. It doesn't take much time. Now, let's go ahead and pop down here to settings, because I do want to look at something. Let's go down to about this system. Uh, it is KDE Plasma 5.26.4, KDE Frameworks 5.101, and kernel version 5.15.0-56-generic. Okay, so I want to go ahead and let's switch this over to a dark mode. Matter of fact, I think I bypassed that. Hold on. Let's open that back up. Let's go to a dark mode and let's apply it. There we go. Now, you still do get a flicker when you switch between light and dark modes, which doesn't bother me any. It really doesn't. It is what it is. And then I also want to go to a double click, selects them. And we will go ahead and close. No. Open by double clicking instead. Okay, that's what I meant. Double click opens in them instead of a single click. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that. Let's apply that. We'll leave that there. We got a little flicker there. But as you can see, everything else runs perfectly fine on this distribution. Uh, let's go back down here. You do have the Discover Software Center. Uh, if you want to download applications and use them, let's go over here. Let's look for something like GIMP. Let's go ahead and pull that up, and you've got GIMP right there. You can just come over here, click Install, and it would install it. It makes it pretty easy. I do hear people complain about the Discover Software Center, and I will say this. Outside of a few distributions, you don't really want to use it. It's really kind of made to be specifically for this distribution and a couple other ones, but once you get into like KDE on an Arch-based distribution, sometimes it'll come with the Discover Software Center. I usually just delete it, get rid of it, so... If you're using it on KDE Neon, you're good to go. If you're trying KDE like on a Manjaro or a Garuda, uh, generally I think Garuda, it's gone. Uh, I think sometimes it'll pop up in Manjaro. You may want to just uninstall it and kick it out of the way. So, And then you can come over here. You've got your application menu. Now you can on your application menu. Uh, if you like this, you can stick right along with it. If you want to go a different route, you could come up here and say show alternatives. You've got an application dashboard. Let's go ahead and switch to that, which pops it up and makes it like a full screen type scenario. Or you can come down here. Let's click on that again and show alternatives. Or you can go with the application menu, which goes really small and everything's kind of self-contained. So that's really, truly up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to the application dashboard. I like to have it a little bit bigger. It's easy for everybody to see. And then you've got all your applications. You've got Arc, Discover, Dolphin, Emoji Selector, Firefox, GwynView, Info Center, Install, KDE Connect, Partition Manager, KWrite, Kate, Console. Let's go ahead and open up and see if they have HTOP. Uh, no HTOP. Let's go ahead and type in top. And let's go ahead and make that full screen so you can see it. And let's make it a little bigger. 
Uh, right now, we're using about a gig. We're using about a gig of memory to be open with just the console open. But like I said, it's not installed. Once you do install it, you'll be using less RAM. Usually, this will hover between 750 and a gig, depending on what you got going on in the background after you install it. And I've got 8 gigs issued to it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's go back down here. Let's go to all applications. Go past console. You got menu editor, ocular, system monitor, system settings, spectacle for your screenshots, VLC for your media. And we will go ahead and back out of that. And then, of course, you could come over here. Go ahead and click on that. Let's see what other wallpapers we might have involved over here. Let's go with something darker. Let's apply that. That looks all right. You're going to have your beautiful KDE wallpapers that they include with most of your KDE distributions. And I think I will stick with that one right there. And you do have install system up here, which will be the Calamari's installer. Let's go ahead and double click that. And there's your Calamari's right there. It's pretty simple. Welcome. You set up your location, pick your keyboard, partitions. You can automatically partition to erase the complete hard disk drive and install. And then set up your user information and install. So that is pretty much it. That is a quick look at KDE Neon. Now, I do want to point out to everybody that what everybody thought was bugs a couple months ago wasn't actually. Uh, Firefox opens without any flickering. You do get a little flicker when you go from light mode to dark mode. Doesn't bother me. And then, of course, Dolphin gives you a little bit more flexibility up here to pick what folders you want to show. So that is really up to the way you want to set everything up. That is a quick look at KDE Neon. Still solid, still stable, still comes with the best desktop that I believe is available today. KDE, when it comes to customization and beauty, you really can't beat it. But really, what do y'all think? Is this something you're already using? Is it something you wouldn't use? Is it something you might download and give a try? Whatever you think about this video or whatever your opinion might be, please drop that in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.